Alive? All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Monday, December the 4th, 2023 Board of Selectmen meeting. I'd like to introduce uh, everyone up here at the uh, front of the room. We have our town administrator over here, Rebecca Oldham, uh, Selectwoman Kathy Kestrin Ellis, Mark Parento, Edward Watson. I think Jason uh, Naves is uh, absent this evening. But, uh, please join us in uh, saying the Pledge of the Allegiance. Pledge of the Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the public. For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up on uh, this evening's agenda, we have um, public comment. Um, public comments are written submissions for public comment and uh, must be made before the start of the meeting per the Board of Selectmen public comment policy amended as of uh, November 13, 2017. Is there anyone here that would, any public comments? No. Discussion and possible votes. Uh, first up, Quick Auto Center Corp Class 2 Auto License Request for Additional Vehicles, Luciano. Uh, Quintin Quintanilla is uh, Lu Luciano here. Yeah. Come on up to the podium, sir. How are you? <coughs> Just uh, state your name for the record, please. And um, um, my name is Patricia Russia, and um, I work with Luciano at Quick Auto Center Corp. Okay, and what can we do for you this evening? Uh, it's because uh, we stopped towing for the police at Groveland, and uh, we have some extra space in our lot, mm -hmm. and that's the reason Luciano is requesting uh, some extra space for the dealer. Okay. How He's just trying to maximize, use the space that was being used before. We have on the property reserved for the tow yard, He's just trying to, to use that space now for uh, uh, access, space, uh, access spots for the dealer. Help you make some money. Yeah. So there you go. All right. So, yeah, it's because since the, this, this space is not being used, you know, he's just trying to, to do something with, with the space. So previously those spaces were used uh, not to sell automobiles, but just to uh, park uh, towed vehicles. Is that correct? Yes. It was a it was a tow yard. It was the lot was all uh, fenced it up, and also they have some um, the previous owner have some storage, a lot of things storage up there. So we clean it up the place, and since we stopped doing the towing for the police, we we have we have no use for the space right now. So we. That's why we're trying to have extra spots so we can invest it in the dealer. But you had cars on them before. They just weren't for resale. You left those spots open for the, uh, the towed vehicles? Was that no. Uh, on this particular spot, was just the, the space was always closed for the vehicles that were towed. Okay. No, no dealer vehicles was uh, started there before. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us? Um, Kathy, do you have anything? Let's see if the board has any questions for you or any issues. Um, yes. Ed, go ahead. Yeah, you. Uh, I go by there every day. And I go by there probably today, probably four times. And uh, on the right side where you're talking about extra parking and there was a there was a, a burnt vehicle in there. It looked like the, the front of a vehicle had been burnt. Uh, to me, the place is a mess up there. It looked like a junkyard. And um, I, I would I, I'd like to see before we issue it a couple of things. I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see the neighbors notified. Uh, they may have some objection to it, but I'd like to hear their opinion. Also, like to Whether we need a public hearing, and but 
you have those pictures that you uh, you sent us? Will you have? Um, yes, uh, but I got some questions about that. Okay. Uh, the first one, uh, which it shows the it shows the vehicles on the side or wh uh, where you're going to put the uh, the vehicles for sale. Yeah, those, those vehicles over there, that, they are not for not sale right now. That's what I put it a, a note underneath uh, the pictures. They, they, we parked the vehicles, that's just to show the displacement that how many vehicles will fit on the space. Okay. That those vehicles there is just for a demonstration of a uh, the maximized. Take a look at this photo right here, the first one. This one. Take a look at that. Look. Can you hold that up, Ed, please? Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, right here. You see, on, you see on the windshield of that vehicle? Yes. Is that 97? So that means that vehicle is being sold. No, that vehicle, um, if you see the other picture, picture uh, if you see uh, at the parking spot that the vehicles you have available, they are not here because we moved them just to show the displacement. Because we took the vehicles that we have only six spots. That's the six spots you have on the front. Okay. So we moved some vehicles, some customer vehicles, and uh, just to show how many, just to see how many vehicles will be possible to fit on the space so we can request it. So, uh, okay. so it's not just not to like uh, randomly ask me like for 20 spaces and then you guys gonna see it doesn't fit. That's how, why you would put, put the picture on. It's just to see that if it's how many vehicles are we requesting for? As uh, the burning vehicle you're saying, um, since we took over uh, from Joe, we're trying to clean the place and doing some modifications. Uh, it's, it, I know it's, it's sometimes it looks like, uh, okay, yes, we do have a vehicle there that uh, looks burned, but this is just uh, like stayed there for like less than a week. You know, it's just something we're working on, and then we wait for the, sometimes we have, uh, we still have a body shop, so we have to wait for the insurance to pick it up, the, the vehicles there total. But if is that a big concern, we can definitely move them to the back uh, so the customers don't see it. And I know that before a huge complaint of the city, uh, at, at least Miss um, Rebecca told me, was the concern about the sidewalk. Uh, the previous owner didn't have a uh, space for the sidewalk. The first thing we did was like trying to respect the city, try to, to, compl to comply with the city and see whatever we can work with. So about the mass, we still, it's still a, a process, you know. We don't have uh, more cars there yet and we're focusing on fixing cars because we want to fix in the dealer, but we don't have, we don't, how we can fix in the dealer if you don't have a license to put more than six cars there. You know, I understand you, what you're saying, but uh, that's, we need the license to put more cars for sale to, in order to have more, you know, taking, take one business out and have another one in. Uh, wh where are you know? Where are you going to park the vehicles f that are, are there for repair? Are that going to be on the extra yeah, parking that's, spaces to the that's right? That's why are we asking, that's what I'm trying to say. We are trying not to focus in more in repairs, but focusing more in the dealer. So that's why we're trying to, if in, in order to, to do that, we have to have a license because I cannot just tell to my customer, I'm not gonna do any repairs because I'm gonna sell cars if I don't have a license to sell the cars, you know? I, if you understand what I'm saying. If, if you guys give us the, the permit and allow us to have more cars for dealer, of course we're gonna not focus a lot on the repairs. Okay, I'm all, I'm all set. Well, I, uh, I, I agree with Ed as long as 
it's okay with town council if we have to do a public hearing for if, the if we, I mean, that's my only concern too, so if we can find that out. Yes, I sent a legality whether or not we have authority to expand the uh, number of. Uh, <coughs> so I had done some original um, questioning with some other communities, and they had just given some guidance that it would be an agenda item. But after speaking with Selectman Watson, I sent a request over to Town Council, and Town Council stated that they would look into it and get back to me. And I just received their response that they were looking into it today. Um, Go ahead, Kathy. Um, hi. Nice to meet you. Um, so I, I understand where you're coming from, that you would like to shift the business from the auto repair more to the auto sale. Yes. What I'm not sure of is our authority to just do that by giving you more parking spots. Because I know that in the past, the neighborhood had weighed in on it when it was doing repair, not under your management. Under the prior management, there were sometimes complaints and concerns about um, cars maybe that have been towed that were blocking the sidewalk that were kind of abandoned in, in various places so um, since we have to we, over we want new businesses obviously um, so we do want to be helpful to you but I think that we need to find out how we do this because I personally don't know I thought we were just renewing the permits that we already had already done before and so when it becomes a different permit we want to just make sure mm -hmm. that we're doing the right thing for you if you yeah. can understand that yes uh, okay so as, as the previous owner he used to park like two tow trucks in the sidewalk I know <laughs> and uh, since we, <laughs> we took over uh, I, I on the beginning I'm not gonna lie on the beginning we kept those tow trucks there because we did not we were trying to administrate the space but those tow, tr uh, tow trucks is not there anymore for a long time. And even um, for uh, customers, sometimes customers or like vendors or appraisers for insurance, they park on the, s on the sidewalk. When we notice that, we request them to park inside the location to keep the sidewalk clear all the time. Sometimes uh, I, we cannot control like all the people, but uh, as, uh, as we try at maximum to keep the sidewalk clear. Yes, and, and we appreciate that. We, you, have, you seem to have a good intention. I'm just saying I think that we have to wait to just check because what we did, the action we took at our prior meeting was just renewal, renewal. Nothing was changing. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's because I didn't gather all the paperwork ready before. Okay. I, it's, it's my fault. I apologize. Well, no, there's no fault here. I mean, it's, it's fine. Um, but you understand we might need to wait till our next meeting just to make sure we understand sure, sure. Um, what we have to do. Yeah, and one okay. of the other concerns that's like that burn car, if we focus our business more in the selling cars, you won't of have course that. we won't have, we <laughs> can fo less focus in the, you know, the You're not going to sell a burned car. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> we can I understand. make the view uh, even better if, you, if you, you guys agree with me. Okay. Well, okay. it sound, sounds like you're trying to do some really nice things. So if you can yeah. be patient with us, I think we... We've been trying to clean that place for a while. And <laughs> it's not being easy, you know, yes. trying to keep the business going. And uh, it, it was a lot of... <laughs> It was a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of junk over there. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah. It, yeah, a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. But, um, and Rebecca's your best contact because we only meet every two weeks, but mm -hmm. um, it's, n it's really nice that you came in and explained it, to us so we can understand, you know, concerns, what you're trying to do. Uh, we, we are open to, to work with the city, you know. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is, Very is, good. I have one question. Is it possible that you are designated an area maybe on your part? For the repair vehicles, so that uh, you know people know where they're going. I mean, uh, I don't want to tie your hands behind your back, but I just if 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 they're in the front of the building and they're saw I mean, like a burned car or something. I mean, you agree that you'll put those in the rear of the property, kind of out of sight, out of mind. It shouldn't bother anyone if you can't see it. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, the uh, the the customer parking I assign on the diagram. Uh, it's going to be the two right in front of the door, at the office door, and that is two more on the side between the six uh, original pl uh, spots that we have for the dealer and the, the, the beginning of the, the new space. 
Right. So we have uh, four four designate uh, spots for customers, <coughs> and okay. for the repair, we we like I'm saying, we're not trying to focus on it, but we we won't have more than 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 that. Okay. Um, question for Rebecca: uh, What's the um, is it the same public uh, notice requirement on a public hearing? If that were the uh, um, requirement under the law on this. Uh, or, or <coughs> If we would add it to the next uh, um, meeting's agenda, would, would, would the two-day posting satisfy? So that's what I want to clarify with town council and whether or not, whether or not a butter notification is required. So you'd have to do mailings? I, I'm not sure. That's All what right. I want to verify. Right. I mean, Ed so, and Swathman so. Watson said that I should verify, so I wanted to make sure. Momentarily, I got a motion to table, but are you available um, in two weeks, just in case? Sure. All right. If 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 I can add it to the next meeting's agenda, I will. But I need to wait and find out. Okay. All right. Uh, I make a motion to table this for all other reasons discussed. Second. No discussion. All those in favor of table. Yep. All right. Okay. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Next up, we have approval of a property use permit for Bagnell PTA for use of town uh, the town hall lawn for. For an event on December the 10th, 2023, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, do we have any information on that? Is somebody here from the Bagnall PTA? Do you have info, Rebecca? Um, the information regarding the event was included in your packet, oh, right. and additional information has been provided in terms of the amount of um, people and the time frame. They're really only looking at utilizing the property for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and it will um, depend on the weather in terms of what they're expecting for turnout. Right. And that's the, um, the event is the uh, Polar Express. So they'll be stopping at a couple of locations in and around town, specifically the Bagnell Elementary School, Washington Park, Shanahan Field, Elm Park, Prairie Park, the Pines, the fire station, and then the town hall on. And so there'll be different stations where they'll drop off and they'll pick something up and then they'll all um, meet together at the town hall on where they'll have Santa and a sleigh and they'll be able to do some activities and take photos accordingly. Thank you. You, you and I set the agenda, but I don't remember this. <laughs> Go ahead, Kathy, what do you got? <laughs> having him, I'm having oh. a senior moment. So, I mean, I, this sounds like a lot of fun, and then they're asking, you know, so that we, we approve it so we know what's going on, the police know what's going on. Um, is the whole event between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., or is there the, the little scavenger hunts? What, what time zone is that in? So they said that the start time will be at 4 p.m., so the event will run from 4 to 7 with the fire station open house going from 10 to 2. They didn't want to multiply um, some other... Um, Santa sightings, um, so they would uh, set everything up around 2.30 uh, and breakdown will be between 7 and 8 p.m. Okay. And the last train will leave Bagnell at 5.45, so the other stops along the route will be cleaned up by 6, 6.15. I mean, it sounds like a lot of fun. I just wanted to check out there because I know that we typically have a few other Santa parades. Um, that have always been fun, but I'm wondering if we're all doing it on the same day as the fire department, doing any drive around town this year on the 10th? Does anybody know? Okay. I believe the 9th. The 9th they're gonna, when, and what about what you you put together last year? Was Do you know what day that's going around town? That will be the 9th. Okay, so the fire department and you are doing the 9th and then? The fire the, department is the 10th. The, yeah. fire, the fire department is going to do their event from 10 to 2. And then the Bagnell PTA is going to okay, be doing so their event so from 4 to 7. So it'll be a day-long Santa Claus. <laughs> weekend-long. <laughs> week, okay, weekend-long Santa Claus. Okay, I think it's just nice to keep track of the, the scheduling and uh, so that we don't have everybody converging at once. <laughs> but otherwise, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. So do we have to uh, vote to make an approval of... The scavenger hunt? Uh, specifically the property use permit. Oh. Since they will be here at Town Hall. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the property use permit 
for the Bagnall Polar Express, Express scavenger hunt on Sunday, December 10th. Hours, I have 3 p.m. From 4 to 7 p.m. 4 to 7 p.m. I'll second that. Discussion. Um, yeah, it's a good point. You know, if there's uh, multiple events with multiple Santa Claus, I mean, that could kind of, you know, children might be Will it confuse you, Children might chairman? be perplexed like by how they're two Santas. Um, the chairman looks confused. You know, I'd be confused. <laughs> I'm seeing double. Ed? No, no discussion. <laughs> Mark? No, we're good. I all right, all those in favor? Beautiful. Approved. Uh, number three, regular or special town employees in accordance with the conflict of interest law. This is a um, town clerk, uh, Elizabeth Conniff, uh topic. Continuation from November 20th meeting. Good evening, Elizabeth. Good evening, thank you. I just announced you, but state your name for the record, please. Yeah, I'm Elizabeth Conniff, town clerk. So I. You asked for a continuance for last week, so I resubmitted the list to you. The one name that was missing was the uh, building inspector, so he is now added to the list of regular. And I left the um, the fire chief, the engineer, on after a discussion with the fire chief that in the event that the board of selectmen ever changed from a strong chief back to a weak chief, you would need the uh, board of fire engineers once again. So I left it on the list. If you wish to remove it, you may. This is a list that should actually be produced by the Board of Selectmen and voted on and then submitted to ethics. It came up during a discussion with eth ethics and I said that I would bring it before you. But you have the authority to make changes and vote on those changes. Kathy, you questioned uh, some things last time on who was on the list right, and they you, you leave. picked we up don't on some mistakes. Well, we don't have a Board of Fire Engineers, but they wish to leave that on there so that in the event that they, we ever created that, uh, board again it could be there I mean all of these positions are what is it under 800 hours what is 800 hours a year yeah mm -hmm. so um, it looks fairly comprehensive what about poll workers poll workers the election workers oh that's what we're calling okay I didn't know if the election officers were they um, wanted me not to describe it as election officers because that's how I had it before. And it was a question from town council when they took a look at the list. So it's either or. They're either election workers or poll workers, but they're oh, one okay, and the same. Oh, okay, but those are the same thing. Okay, right. I get that. Thank you. That's elections okay. more general. Right. That's fine. Is that what it says? <laughs> no, he didn't want election workers. He didn't want election. I think it seems like elections a little more general. but Agreed. That's how it was originally... The original list that was submitted to ethics in the past had election workers, so that's what I repeated in his comment back to us. He asked us um, maybe to rephrase. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if there's a legal definition, because, uh, all right, Edwin. No, I'm all set. Mark. All right. Um, What's that? Rebecca, have you reviewed the list? Because I, I really don't know who should be classified as what, so I'm going to disclose that. It, it's, it's appropriate. You've reviewed it. After the first time we had sent it over to council, we got some feedback. We noted the error at the last meeting about the building inspector, so the town clerk went through, and then I went through again, and I thought that it seemed like it was in compliance. All right. With what we know and uh, what we have, appreciate it. Uh, make a motion that we approve the uh, list as submitted by the uh, town clerk. So if you'll sign off on the letter, I will forward that to second ethics. It. That'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yep. It's approved, and uh, we'll get signatures on it. Awesome. Thank for you very record, much. Ah, uh, strike that. Uh, he abstains from the record. Okay. All right. So we have a three and an abstention, but it still passes. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Very, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next up, we have uh, number four. We have the Great Greater Amesbury Public Health Excellence Group. Intermunicipal Agreement, IMA, for Public Health Excellence for Shared Services Grant, and it's a continuation from November the 20th, 2023 meeting. Um, Rebecca, you want to spare this one? 
Yes, so at the last meeting, the board had asked for council to review the drafted agreement, and we sent it over to town council, Mead, Talaman, and Costa, and they said that the agreement looked fine. They didn't have any concerns about the agreement itself. However, they would like to see more in terms of what services the town is actually receiving from this agreement, and so I sent that information back over to the Board of Health Chair as well as the health agent, and I am just waiting for confirmation so that that information can also be reviewed by town council and confirmed that it would be in the best interest of the town moving forward so we're still waiting that information from the um group and hoping to receive that shortly because i do know that they had mentioned at the last meeting that there was a timeline that they had to stick to as well so once we receive that information we can uh, put it back on uh, the docket Correct. all right kathy any comments um no Ed, no, Mark. With that, I'll make a motion to table that issue until we uh, get further information to uh, deliberate on. Second that. All right. No discussion. All those in favor? Yep. Four zero. Tabled. Uh, number five, policies and procedures for host communities to promote and encourage the full participation in the regulated marijuana industry by people from disproportionately harmed communities as required by Chapter 180 of the acts of 2022 and this is a continuation from november the 20th uh, meeting uh, um i questioned it i thought it was uh, hieroglyphics i had no idea what all those citations and references were about and um so rebecca do you have the uh, layman's condensed version that we could uh, make a decision on Yes, Mr. Chair. So I um, put together a memo that's included in your packet that gives you a little bit more condensed version of exactly what it is that the CCC is requiring us to do, the Cannabis Control Commission. And essentially that memo that you had came from the CCC and that's the one that had a lot of the acronyms and a lot of the language that was just a little bit too technical in nature in terms of what it was that they were actually seeking. So I condensed that down working with town council in that memo and essentially am just asking that the board move forward with adopting the policy that you find in your packet. So the CCC had um, issued guidance on how to create a social equity policy, and that's the document that you reviewed at the last meeting. And what we're trying to do is that in 2022, the state, uh, the governor signed into law the an act relative to equity in the cannabis industry. And so as part of that, you must adopt these policies to promote equity in the cannabis industry no later than July 1st, 2023, or be subject to monetary penalties. There was a delay in getting the memo out from the CCC, so that deadline has been extended. So town council noting that while we don't allow for uh, retail marijuana, we do allow for medical marijuana and therefore must come into compliance. So they put together the draft policy that you find in your packet and essentially it just states that the requirements are on our permitting webpage and it states there's cannabis social equity applicants are able to receive a, um, a discount in their application fee um, and that will have all of the relative materials at their convenience. Um, so there's really not much of a heavy lift in terms of compliance other than agreeing to adopt the policy which uh, again reiterates that those policies will be online and that all permitting information relative to the medical marijuana permitting process is also available online and it just requires adoption at a regularly scheduled meeting and it will bring us into compliance and again without coming into compliance and, and by signing the document we will be exposed to possible monetary penalties for failure to comply what do they mean by social equity in the marijuana industry I mean I, you know I mean we pass pass it around i mean i you know, i don't understand it what, what is social equity in marijuana i think it's in terms of the applicant process and how host communities have set up their agreements and that's the, again another acronym that you were seeing the last time the hcacs which is the the host community agreements that are entered into and how those are are structured because a lot of times it comes with different monetary um, incentives for communities to uh, align themselves with certain applicants. And I think that certain applicants are feeling as though that they're not getting um, a fair share because they can't compete in that market. And I think that based upon what their CCC is stating in their memo is that they would like a fair shot for all applicants who are looking to enter into the industry. And that by having a social equity policy, 
that will allow them to fairly compete in the market and look for places to either have a medical facility and or a, uh, recre a retail facility when allowed. So some towns get paid by these businesses, right? Yes. It's kind of a, what I would characterize as a, a legal kickback of some sort. They have to pay extra. So is that what this is about? It's like we, if, if we charge 2%, for example, to one business, it has to be 2% for everybody? Is, is, is that the gist of it? I'm trying to understand it. It's like you can't cut a deal with someone and say, you've got to pay us 5% of the profit or the sales, and, and another entity comes before us, and we give them a different number. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Right? I think that this I'm trying to understand it. I'm yeah, just, part, part, pardon my uh, No, I, I agree. It's a little, ignorance. There's a lot of, no, 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 it's not ignorance. There's a lot of verbiage. But down here, halfway through, under the title, The Town of Groveland Cannabis Social Equity Policy, it's, it's stated that this equity component will include um, I, whether a licensed applicant is pre-verified as a social equity business by the commission. So we don't do that. Um, two, whether the licensed applicant is a social equity program participant. So that would be yes or no, they are. Three, whether the licensed applicant is an economic empowerment priority applicant. Again, we don't qualify them. Some other agency does that. Four, whether the licensed applicant has prior marijuana-related criminal conviction. Five, whether the licensed applicant is part of an area of disproportionate impact as identified by the commission, which we don't do that, but they would have that label or that qualification. I see this, I mean, or it, six, it, a majority of the licensed applicant entity is comprised of individuals from black, African-American, Hispanic, Latino, or Native American or indigenous descent. And so, I mean, all of these qualifications are outside the scope of Groveland. But we have to have a policy. Those are in the statute anyways? Yeah, we have to have a policy that recognizes this. That, that's my understanding. Because we wouldn't discriminate anyways. I don't, you know. All right. So I guess I would move to discuss. I don't know why a prior marijuana conviction would matter if marijuana is legal now. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> okay, <but laughs> you, so know? I, I was, you know. This is the policy then, like right? like saying you ate a candy it's, bar and it was illegal and now it's legal. You yeah. know, we're going to hold it against you, you know. So it's, it, yes, it's a designation that allows you to be considered fairly among other applicants in the industry. So okay, but we accept we are to vote on this thing titled the Town of Groveland Social Equity Policies. Yes. And that, and that will be put on our website. Yes. So I make and, a motion and, to uh, approve uh, this as written. All right. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there, uh, you talked to town council. Is there any burden to us? No. Is there any benefit to us? Uh, not getting monetary fines by the state. That's a good thing. So they're going to punish us? Yes. We have to. Yes. I just want to let everyone know, listen and know we'll be punished if we don't do this. So uh, maybe I'm voting on this under duress. So. With that, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor? <laughs> yeah? No. No? You want the penalties? <laughs> I still have a lot of questions about it. All right, I'll, I'm gonna withdraw mine and let it, let it fail it too. Can I do that procedurally, Kathy? I'm gonna withdraw um, my yes. You can withdraw it and then um, the burden is on all right. You and Selectman Watson, if, if any. Um, Procedurally, can we continue our discussion or we already voted it 2 2 against? We'll continue it. We'll get some more qu questions answered, right? Well, we'll Mr. Chairman, if I could make a suggestion, would you guys, would you all write down your questions and forward them to the town administrator? Because. Yeah, I'd we're like going to have to them. act on it one way or another. And if we're going to, you know, get uh, penalties imposed on us, um, we should find out why. You mind submitting questions? Well, well, can we get them answered tonight? Can, 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 yeah, I can we start open? Can I hit the reset could. button here? Let's oh, yeah. <laughs> start the meeting over Procedurally. Again. No, no. <laughs> I think a motion was made and it was failed. I make so a motion to go back to discussion. Are we allowed to do that? I, I believe so. I make a motion that we go back to discussion. I jump the gun if you're, still, if you're not uh, uh, you know, uh, done with your, your question. Yeah, well, you're going to withdraw your motion? I'm going to withdraw my motion. I make a motion to allow me to walk. <laughs> Draw my motion. <laughs> well, Mark. <laughs> Second it. All those in favor of me going backwards. I would draw my motion. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, Kathy? I'm going to just abstain at this point. I have right. no idea Bye. what you're doing, but fine. Let's go forward. Ed. All right. We're going back to the discussion. Not confusing. What are your concerns, Ed? Well, 
Um, in, in number two, the last page, number two, uh, the permitting process from initial inquiry through the special permit and building permit process. So it, it, it sounds like a building permit process is that, that this uh, group that provides the training and technical assistance could petition for a, for a building. Uh, am I reading that correctly? So they would be required to file for a, a, well, under two, it says that the town of Groveland will provide permitting technical assistance for social equity and economic empowerment applicants navigating the town of Groveland's cannabis permitting process. So you can't pull the building permit until you get the permit for approval for the medical marijuana here in, in, in Groveland. True. But then read section three. The town will endeavor to streamline permitting for these applicants, the last uh, part of the last sentence. So, so it sounds like that they're going to expedite the permitting for them so they, they may not have to meet uh, the building codes if they put up a building? No, definitely not. That's, that's not what that implies. They, it would just be that they wouldn't be, it would be a, 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 it's a special permit that you would have to receive under the Zoning Board of Appeals. So you'd have to notice the application, you'd have to get the abutted list, you'd have to hold a public hearing, the board would have to review. It would also be subject to, depending on what's proposed, site plan approval and things of that nature. So there are things that it would be subject to. So I believe that through what they're saying is that they'll reduce financial barriers in making it an extensive process and overburdensome on the applicant to comply with the regulations. Not necessarily that they would be exempt from the regulations, that, that we wouldn't use the regulations against them to make it overburdensome throughout the special permitting process but not necessarily building, specifically the Zoning Board of Appeals in which you would need to seek your um, special permit in order to move forward with the development itself. Uh, the other question on the, uh, th this was signed into law on November 11th of uh, 2022, uh, and you had to make the decision by July of 2023. Well, we're into December of 2023. And uh, have all the other communities in Massachusetts approved this? Um, I don't know if they approved it, but in speaking with town council, they stated that the, um, the recent legislative changes required host communities such as Groveland to adopt initial social, social equity policies or procedures that comply to promote social equity in the cannabis, in, in cannabis industry by July 1st. However, the CCC did not issue any guidelines on these policies until the end of June, and the regulations were not promulgated until 10, uh, October 31st, making compliance with the deadline nearly impossible. The policy that was sent to us uh, would be adopted to comply with the July 1st mandate. So it looks like other communities are facing the same situation based upon the regulatory <coughs> mandates imposed by the state without uh, failure to consult with the CCC in terms of those guidelines, but I don't know how many have enacted it, but I do know that we're not the only ones that must comply. And what are the monetary penalties for not, not signing up? So, th so this is, uh, they're, they're putting a gun to our head. We have to do it or there'll be monetary uh, consequences. What are those? I don't know. I need to pull the legislation and, and consult council on exactly what those fines look like, but I could pull the Massachusetts general law and be able to find that as well. What, what, what is the deadline now? So it looks like they said like the regulations weren't promulgated until October 31st. So I, I would imagine that we need to comply before the end of the fiscal year, but I'm not sure if it's the end of the calendar year either. I can get further details as to what, when compliance must be met and what the monetary, comp monetary fines would be. Yeah, I think we should find out, um, you know, and uh, what do they mean by streamline? And, and they talk about social equity and that they want to streamline it to me. Um, we should streamline it for all applicants, not just them. So where's the social equity and give them favorable treatment? You know, it, it, it's, it's counterintuitive to me. So why wouldn't a, a, every other special permit have less uh, uh, financial uh, burdens and, uh, and uh, red tape uh, before the ZBA than the marijuana industry, um, which I was opposed to bringing to town because, you know, marijuana is bad for you. But... Um, so why do they why 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 is it socially equitable but we got to streamline it for them so what do they mean by streamline to me that's overly broad and and, uh, and vague so is it even is it even lawful so i make a motion we table it we get some more information 
Mr. Chairman, yeah. you, you, since you opened up discussion again. All right, all right, go ahead. Paul, I mean, I'm looking at this and, um, you know, the document that we've been asked to approve does not change any of the requirements in Groveland to have a medical marijuana facility. Um, and this is just to address certain groups who the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission has identified as requiring social equity um, steps so that their, their ability to compete in that market with other groups who are not deemed to have that inequity. Um, this is just to kind of level the playing field. There's nothing in here that forces Groveland to issue permits um, without due diligence and without the regular hearings and process. What we would be expected to do would be to publish that we are co complying with this social equity program. I don't know why a town wouldn't want to comply with a social equity program. Um, this doesn't cost us anything. Um, and it doesn't force our hand in any way, but it does say that if a group came to us who is identified as one of the groups required under the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission identified as needing special assistance, it would be expected that our, our inspectors and our administrator and others involved in this process would um, be aware that they are a social equity program participant and and ensure that they are understanding of our process and uh, extend guidance. But we do this anyway, I would hope, to everybody that tries to do business in our town. But I don't see any problem with adopting this since the, these groups were identified by a, a state control commission and um, they want to ensure that they're treated with social equity. To me, it's pretty simple. I agree with social equity. I think all decisions ought to be colorblind. Um, but mm -hmm. what do they, I'm going to ask you this, Kathy. What do you think they mean by streamline? Why isn't everything streamlined? Well, I, I agree. We would like to think that everybody who comes before the boards in Groveland can, can get their application moved forward. And I, I would, you know, kind of reading between the lines, assuming that a group that gets designated within this social equity grouping, um, either through language or other types of um, issues that might make it more difficult for them to um, participate. This is to make sure that they're not pushed off to the side, that we continue to keep them in the flow of the process. Just It's just to ensure a little extra care if they come to us and they show us documentation that they've been identified within the social equity program. I mean, we didn't create this program, we didn't identify them, but they've been identified at a state level and each town is expected to recognize that designation. I, I don't see a problem with that really, well, just, well, again, like you said, why wouldn't we streamline everybody? Well, I hope we do. I hope we don't push people off endlessly from meeting to meeting and not meet their needs when they're trying to open a business or, or expand a business or do any business in our town. Okay. I would hope we facilitate the process. Re Rebecca, what, what, um, what, what, what are our expectations on streamlining? What, what does that mean? What, what are we supposed to do? I, in, in my experience, when a process is streamlined, it's to, again, remove hurdles from the process in order to make sure things are done in a timely manner. So when an application is received, you have X amount of days to notice the, the public hearing or the application, then you have X amount of days to hold a public hearing, and then you have X amount of days to deliberate and to decide on that application, and then you have X amount of days to get that application or the decision back to the applicant for uh, proper action and then follow through with the rest of the permitting process, whatever that may be. So depending on the special permit process, any type of streamline would be to meet those deadlines and not to extend them or to make it overly burdensome in terms of asking for additional engineering or additional things beyond what you would ask others for that cost the applicant money and time. So when we say streamline, I mean, like 
So like Women Cash Nola said, we try and streamline all of our applications to the benefit of the businesses. So, and that means meeting those deadlines and making sure that they're able to um, get through the process without any hurdles. Unless they define that, it's ambiguous to me. I don't, I don't you know, we're going to step on all kinds of traps for the wary on uh, wh whether or not we uh, meet a, um, an undefined um, streamlined process. Ed, do you have any more questions? Um, yeah, I'm just concerned about some of the, uh, the things that they mentioned in here. The policy before you this evening, which addresses the limitation on marijuana establishment to medical only models the current guidelines and ensures interim compliance with the statute and regulations uh, it, it almost sounds like they're trying to force a force medical marijuana facilities in uh, based upon this legislation that they that, that was passed it, it uh, I, I don't I don't think it's 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 being explained uh, and you know it, it, it just looks like that's what they're trying to do, it, especially with the, uh, the building permit process and uh, special permits. It, it, it almost sounds like they're forcing, like I said, a, a medical marijuana facility on the town of Groveland or in, in all of these towns possibly, especially where it says addresses the limitation on marijuana establishments to medical only. We're required by law to allow for medical marijuana. We are a no community, so we do not have to allow for uh, retail marijuana establishments here in Groveland, but all communities in the state of Massachusetts are required by law to allow for medical marijuana. Therefore, we have a general bylaw that allows for medical marijuana, and we have a particular zone where we allow for medical marijuana. So anybody who could want to come in and, and to file an application has every right to do so under the law as it's currently written and as we currently complied or that we previously complied with when the state mandated that all municipalities allow for medical marijuana. I don't have any problem with equality, but um, I, I got a problem with this streamlining process and what we're supposed to do and not supposed to do. And uh, I don't know that I want to do anyone in the marijuana industry any favors. Um, that's my opinion. Are we through discussing? I'm, I'm all set. All right. I'm going to put it to a vote again. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to vote no. All those, in, all those in favor? What's the I'll motion? Ma I'll make a motion to, um, not adopt it at this time. Do we get more? Table it? Yeah, that's what I want to, are you tabling or just? Are you want to table it to get more info? Well, I don't want to cause, you know, us to get fined. All right. I make a motion. I make a. Uh, Before you table it, are you going to write down your questions so that we get them answered for our next meeting? Rebecca, write them down. Rebecca, my question is this. Okay, I don't need to write it down. It just is exactly what I said. I'm gonna have to write it down. Can we ask town council or somebody in the know um, what our expectations are to streamline? If it's not defined and the statute's ambiguous, it's not going to be enforceable. That's my opinion. That's my two cents on it. So, you know, I don't like laws that are not clearly defined. The legislature and the, and the, and the whoever regulatory body that promulgates things should use plain English so that people can comply with the law. Otherwise, they're not going to comply with the law. So what are our expectations before we say yes? So that's it. Do, are there guidelines on streamlining? Yes or no? And what are they? If the answer is no, then they should go back and rewrite it. That's my question. Clear? <laughs> Any other? Ed, you want to ask anything? Um, yeah, are you going to be asking this to the to town council? Correct. Uh, I find out how many how many communities have already signed on to this. They should know. And what are the penalties? What are the what are the penalties? Right. And if this was a, uh, if this was a law passed by our legislature, it seemed that it would, like it would be a, uh, to make it a state law rather than have to have the uh, communities uh, sign on to it. It, it just, uh, it just seems kind of sneaky to me. I think it goes back to home rule, but. 
I'll ask the questions to town council, such as they want to know when the regulations are to be in place since July 1st no longer applies. They want to know um, what the expectations are to streamline since it is ambiguous and not clearly defined. And they also want to know how many municipalities have already enacted these policies. And okay. Mr. Chairman. Kathy. Um, so from reading this, what we're voting on tonight is not a law. Is this a law? No, we're voting on Okay, policies. this is not a law. Thank you. So that the governor signed into law the act relative to equity in the cannabis industry. That's the law. We're not voting on a law. This is a law that already exists. We're voting on a policy to be in compliance with a state law. Whether you agreed to the law or not, it's been passed. So this is just a policy on social equity. If you need clarification, I think that's fine, but let's not mislead the people watching this show that we're making a decision here in Groveland on a law. That's not what's happening. Bill no, said, if, if it's a law, then what do they need us for? Okay, if, if it's a law and we don't have any control or, or saying it either way, then you don't need my vote and I'm not going to rub a stamp Beacon Hill's uh, uh, poor decisions. So if they want us to adopt um, a town policy under a mandate, then they need to tell me what it is they want me to vote on. Because right now I don't know what I'm voting on. So I want more information. So if it's top down ivory tower Beacon Hill to me, then they can go it alone. I'm not voting for it. I make a motion, we table it. Second the motion. All those in favor of, favor of tabling? Yep. We're gonna table it, get some more info. Moving right along. Mm -hmm. Policies and procedures for, no, strike that. Just did it. Six, vote of the Board of Selectmen to transfer surplus bond proceeds to debt service. I think this is a Rebecca issue. So um, if the amount of bond proceeds uh, remaining after a project is completed is $50,000 or less, the surplus proceeds may now be applied to the payment of debt services. The um, vote before you this evening is specifically for the um, water and sewer. So it's the water main project and the sewer pump station repairs. So those monies would then allow the water and sewer department to pay down their uh, existing debt with the proceeds, which is 18927 and then 6613 And that is uh, required to have approval of the chief executive officer under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, which is the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Can you make a motion to initiate discussion if needed? Go ahead. Motion. Sure. So in accordance with the provisions of General Law Section Chapter 44, Section 20, the following amounts are hereby transferred to the town's debt service amount, 18927 representing the surplus amount originally borrowed for water mains project as part of the town's June 15, 2017 bond issue and second, $6,613.44, representing the surplus amount originally borrowed for a sewer pump station repair project as part of the town's January 19th, 2012 bond issue. There's a second. Yes. Sir. All right. Discussion's open. Kathy. Nothing. Mark. No, it's pretty straightforward. Edward. I'm all set. I'm all set too. I put it to a vote. All those in favor? Yep. Approved. Number seven, fiscal year 25, capital improvement plan, town administrator. I'm just getting my screen. <coughs> Need a minute? Want me to move on to another one? No, I'm just putting it up on the screen. So uh, this is the plan that I've been working on uh, with the finance team for a little while now. I apologize for the delay. I, I had said that I was going to get this out to you in November, um, but things got pushed aside a little bit, so I apologize. Um, so this year we had nine projects that were submitted for funding for a total of $867,000. Of those nine projects, we only proposed to put forward six of them for a total of $378,000. 
Uh, the funding sources that we had proposed were from free cash, American Rescue Funds, the proceeds of, of sale of town buildings, and bond premiums. Uh, based upon the current uh, debt service and outstanding debt service, we did not feel as though it was appropriate to go out to, um, to acquire more debt at this point in time. Oops, sorry. So you'll see that the majority of the requests came from, um, or the majority of the requests were associated with building and facilities. And then the blue is the requests associated with highway, the yellow police and fire, um, and then the gray is listed as the um, library. So some way of background in terms of the funds that we have available for capital expenditures, we have our reserve funds. Uh, specifically, we have our certified free cash, our stabilization fund, and our capital stabilization fund. Um, you'll see the trend over the year. We are trending in the right direction. There are some things that have happened over the year that have altered these numbers. Um, in FY21, we had to take monies out of our stabilization fund in order to fund the Pentucket Regional School Supplemental budget. Um, we had originally planned to use ESSER funds, and unfortunately, we were not <coughs> able to. Um, so that resulted in a vote to utilize those funds to make sure that we were able to um, fund that assessment. And then you'll also see that um, we had a um, excess of uh, funds in FY23 in our certified free cash. That was as a result of some of the sale of some of the equipment and some of um, the um, tax title accounts and investment income coming in over uh, what we had budgeted for. And um, essentially, you will see that the capital stabilization has been trending forward. Um, it is not a large amount. We would like to make sure that we continue to comply with our finance policy and continue to make sure that we're making payments into that account so that if things were to occur that we would have um, monies in order to address those situations. So the American Rescue Funds, um, we received uh, $2.4 million. We've allocated a good percentage of those monies for the use of certain projects, as you'll see listed up on the screen. Um, there's a, a bunch of different projects that we funded based upon whether or not it was the plumbing for the Bagnell Elementary School, whether or not it was some COVID testing kits from the Board of Health. There were some technology upgrades that we had. We also funded the uh, purchase of the uh, fire truck that we recently acquired. Um, there were some lost wages that we had um, identified for premium pay for some of the workers, as well as the request that came through from the Garden Club for some of their lost revenue due to COVID and their inability to hold events. So as of right now, we have a total of 1.9 um, million expended for our American Rescue Funds. We've also been very successful with getting grants throughout the years. Um, right now, I just put in the ones that were uh, 10,000 and above because at our recent town meeting, we had increased our threshold limit from 10,000 to 20,000, but it still expends into last year. So I just wanted to make sure that we were accounting for them. Um, that being said, we have brought in about $2.9 million worth of grant funding. And one of those projects is um, to be determined. We do not know the final uh, fiscal amount, uh, but it will be quite substantial based upon the project as it's proposed, and that's the safe routes to school. And I think that there's a lot to be said for the grant funding and allowing us to push forward a lot of these other capital projects that we have before us that we're unable to allocate, whether it be free cash or stabilization or use taxpayer dollars uh, from our operating budget in order to cover that. And we've been able to do a lot, and it's been really exciting to see those projects come to fruition. Then taking a closer look at the debt service, like I had mentioned earlier, um, a big portion of our debt service is uh, the Pentucket Regional School Project. Um, we do anticipate this fiscal year for some of the short-term ban payments for the town equipment, some radios and whatnot to fall off, uh, which will be great. Uh, however, again, we're still carrying a lot of debt from the middle school, high school project. We also have the high school, excuse me, the um, Center Street purchase for 150 Center Street. We have a fire truck on there. Um, and we also are still paying off some of the other um, Bagnell addition uh, project for the, the gymnasium.
So after taking a look at all of the projects that were submitted, we put together a funding plan. Uh, we don't expect to utilize um, much of the free cash, but we were looking to um, spend about $149,000 in free cash, $111,000 in ARPA funds, using proceeds of sale of building for $89,000 and bond premiums for both $41,000 and $3,000. And the projects that we were looking to fund were the um, cruiser that we historically have had as part of a reoccurring capital plan with our police department, uh, also the public safety generator, then the fire chief command vehicle, we were all heard from the chief at the last meeting, then there's the electrical replacement at the town hall complex, and that's just a study at this point in time. The library shelving replacement is a phased approach uh, of getting some additional shelving, and I have a following slide with more detail on each of these projects. And then the last one is the highway garage replacement. So the first one that we're looking at here is the electrical panel replacement. So we have outdated equipment, uh, Federal Pacific Electric panels, uh, they no longer make this piece of equipment, so if something were to happen, we do not have replacement parts. Um, and based upon the HVAC and other equipment loads that we're adding to the electrical panels, we are getting very close to not having them trip. And if something doesn't trip, and we're going to be in trouble because that's a lot of... Um, probability for a fire. So um, based upon the need to update the equipment, and this is actually in all three buildings here in the town hall complex, so it's the library building, it's the town hall, and then also the public safety building. So all three of those need to be evaluated. So we're looking to fund about $25,000. I know it sounds like a lot. It's not um, an easy pill to swallow, but to have an uh, electrical engineer come in and tell us exactly what needs to be done um, and how we can safely um, install new equipment and also take into consideration what a phased approach would look like because we have our public safety building and our public safety building is our dispatch and it's our emergency center so we need to figure out how we can allow for them to transfer over to new equipment and generators and things of that nature so there would be a plan that we need to put together so we're proposing about twenty five thousand dollars to work on that and figure out exactly what we need to do the loads the requirements and get a plan in place to move forward the other project we have is the highway yard garage replacement. Um, the building could go another year, um, but with all of the new investments in the equipment that we purchased, uh, just with the ARPA funds alone, to let the, the equipment continue to sit outside and the elements, et cetera, um, as well as have the staff um, and the laborers over there work in a suitable environment, we would propose that we would expand the facility slightly and it's a new type of shell that would go over where the existing one is and it would just extend out um, slightly. It's not much larger than what's there before, but it will allow for them to store um, some of the newer vehicles there and it'll give the mechanic and the laborers a place to work on the vehicles and um, other equipment as needed. And that total is 114,422 and we were looking to um, fund that in a variety of ways, as we mentioned, the proceeds of the sale of buildings and then the bond premiums for a project with the uh, like terms. Then we have the Command Car 1 replacement. I'm not gonna go into much detail. The chief was able to secure a much lower pr price than what we had um, hoped for. So the vehicle came in at $63,570 as opposed to the $75,000 up to allocation that the board had made at the last meeting. Um, so we are moving forward with that. And then there's the emergency generator replacement. And this was a request that came through from the emergency management director, uh, officer sergeant, as well as the police chief. Uh, so we are the cooling uh, emergency shelter here in town hall. And we are fed through the generator over at the police department. And the police department generator is also what's the backup power so if something were to happen and they would need to dis have the dispatch and the communications are all online at that particular location. The current generator is um, is not functioning as it should. It, it's been verified that it it's okay, um, but the police chief feels very um, nervous that if there's a lag of any sort that there would be too much downtime 
and he would like to see it be connected to natural gas because it is not it right now. We have to make sure that it's uh, fueled and serviced properly to make sure that it's maintained. I'm sorry, in that one we were looking to fund with a free cash allocation of $90,000. And then there's the library shelving and replacement. Um, so the library shelving that's currently there is tied to the wall. Um, some of the shelving units are, are old and outdated, and so they are making some improvements to their facility. As we know, the Board of Selectmen had allowed for them to move forward with their uh, flooring project through opera funds originally, so they are starting to move forward with that. Uh, they've also been very successful in getting some grants and expanding their program opportunities at the library, uh, specifically in their, uh, their childhood um, development area. And so this would be the next phase of making sure that we can bring them um, up into the to the 20th century so they're looking at um, doing shelving and in talking with the director it made sense that we phase this approach so we were talking about funding a couple of shelving units each year uh, one of the reasons for this as well is because we would be the ones putting the shelving units together and then we would need to also figure out how to dispose of the steel um, shelving units that are currently there um, so we felt as though if we did a phased approach, it would allow us to organize things and move that project forward thoughtfully, as well as if the Library Board of Trustees was interested in pitching in and wanted to fund additional shelving units, they would be able to do so um, and push that timeline along a little quicker. And that's something that we had proposed to use ARPA funds for. So the allocation for fiscal year 25 would be $20,460. And then there is the police cruiser replacement. That is something, again, that we've been doing historically every year. Um, it's something I would like to move into the budget and not necessarily continue to fund as a free cash item, um, just because it's a reoccurring expenditure. It's not something that is gonna fall off one year. It's not just a one-time expense and then next year we don't have to worry about a cruiser. The way that the police chief has structured this has been that he recycles the oldest cruiser every year. So every year we're buying a new cruiser. Um, so from a financial management aspect of things, you shouldn't really use your free cash to spend on a reoccurring um, purchase. It should be something that's, that's done for a capital nature from time to time or to cover other expenses as needed or to leave in the reserve for a rainy day type of thing or to put to a stabilization, et cetera. Um, but we are looking to fund the request utilizing free cash for $64,967. And this slide just gives you, essentially, I know it's a little hard to read because there's a lot of projects, but it gives you essentially all of the projects um, that were requested um, and what we have before us. Uh, one of the items I didn't really address right now is the school. So we are in charge with capital improvements for the Bagnell Elementary School. So m the majority of the projects that you see at the bottom are in relation to that. Uh, working with Jonathan Simo, who's here tonight, uh, with the operations facility, uh, operations manager over at the um, Paducah Regional School District, we came up with the following projects and needs for the Bagnell em Elementary School. Um, if you remember a couple of meetings ago, we had discussed the fact that there was $131,000 of monies from the FY21 borrowing for the schools that could be utilized for like term projects. And so we are proposing to move forward with the, um, the grinding and top coat and asphalt on the roadways in the front parking lot, as well as the, um, the sidewalks and correcting those sidewalks. And if there's, again, specific questions in relation to the school, Jonathan's here to answer any of those questions. But otherwise, those are the projects that we are looking to put forward for this fiscal year and we can, again, bring in departments to speak more to that at our next meeting, if you would like, or if there's any additional questions that I can answer or any additional financial information that you would like. The plan has a lot more detail in it, and it goes into a lot more detail about our, our um, financial um, status and what we should be doing and how we should be doing it and ways that we can fund capital projects moving forward. Um, so if there's more time that the board would like to spend reading that document, then I would welcome that as well.
Okay. There's a lot to digest, a lot of numbers here. Are they available for the uh, public uh, online? How would people um, have the opportunity to see what we have up on the screen other than to uh, put, uh, stare well, at the screen? I can put it up on the website, and um, it will be in the packet so they can see the, the right. report could you, as well. Could you put it on the website, please? Um, each of these items in each of the uh, respective uh, fiscal years, they would be uh, part of the process um, uh, uh, the budgetary process and uh, warrant articles on each and every one of them or um, just incorporated in the omnibus? How, how would that work? So all of these as they're being proposed now would be uh, re or require a warrant article in order to take action. So it would be an allocation of free cash, an allocation of surplus funds or um, anything of that nature. So nothing in, in this plan is being proposed operationally. Historically, what's happened is that the town has approved the capital plan, but they haven't necessarily assigned funding mechanisms in order to bring those those projects proposed um, to light. Um, so the goal is to, to, one, adopt a plan that the town feels strongly in support of, because like you'll see on this, this list, they'll have the Salem Street Dam and it has the, you know, the River Pines sidewalk. So all of these, if this plan is approved, means that it gives us a way of trying to fund capital projects, projects that exceed the threshold of the $20,000 and um, the longevity, the, the expected life. So the plan itself needs to be adopted because the projects as proposed need to be adopted. And then as you're stating, the financial aspect of town meeting must be assigned to each of those projects as seen fit. So some of them you won't fund and some of them you will and you just have to identify what funding source you're, you're looking to, to utilize. So at uh, future meetings we will discuss the Warren articles and whether or not to um, group some of those projects or to isolate them for instance. Uh, will uh, people at town meeting be voting on uh, a new cruiser um, specifically? Yes. Or you know and, 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 and at prior town meetings some people have Try to uh, somehow separate or bifurcate some of the uh, Warren articles to vote on individual items like radios or, uh, you know, years ago we had a fire truck and there wasn't a, f a financing mechanism. So, um, so if we propose these Warren articles at, a f at future meetings, I mean, we should have available funds. Do we have the money or it's wishful thinking? So we, I, I think it's, it's, I think we have the money in terms of the ARPA funds, the surplus funds, and the bond proceeds, and we have some free cash. But like you're saying, I think we have to be open, and I've also communicated this with the departments, is that if we have a bad winter and snow and ice comes in really high, then if we want to fund $90,000 for a generator, I'm sorry, we need to spend that $90,000 to cover our snow and ice budget. So that's not something that we're going to put forward because those funds have be are, are being required elsewhere. And we still have time to make those determinations. But it still doesn't mean that the generator isn't needed and that the town wants to, when it can, put monies forward. And that's why there's the two separate means. You're, you're approving the plan, and then you're also approving separately the financial aspect of how those things get funded. So you still have an opportunity to put it before the townspeople to make that determination. Okay. And I, I don't think you have a crystal ball, but this is... Uh, um, this this plan um, does not have the potential um, impact of any uh, future vocational school, so that's to be continued. Yeah, so. the the monies that we have available that we're suggesting to utilize are not necessarily funds that could go um, to, towards that. Towards that, towards any future debt service on a new school. I exactly. I mean, free cash is different. So free cash you could probably use to to to, to try and and mitigate and, and offset the tax. Uh, or additional tax. So yes, that's something that could take into consideration. But the ARPA funds, you're really, I mean, that could also be utilized to offset. Um, uh, I would have to double check local government services. So that may be something that you could use, but you only have about $100,000 and you must allocate those funding by December 20, 2024 uh, per the federal um, allocation. Um, so you don't have much more time to figure out exactly what you could spend those on. But yes, those could definitely be allocated, I think towards um, any potential funding uh, that might come up, but the others being the bond proceeds and the sale of buildings can only be used for capital projects. They can't be used for anything else. Gotcha. And uh, what do you require of the board this evening? Uh, just uh, discussion points and uh, have uh, uh, provide this information for people to uh, scrutinize? 
discuss? Uh, you don't need a vote tonight. I don't need a vote tonight, but I would like the board to, to, to take a look at the information and let me know if there's any questions or any additional information that they would like so that I can be prepared to bring that before you at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Um, overall, I like it. I love the numbers. Um, I've had a concern ongoing about the issue that we call this the Salem Street Dam. Okay, and that when I read the reports going back to when Barbara Kelling was road commissioner, the loss of life that's tied to this dam failing is tied to the fact that we have a swimming area below it, which we don't have. And we will have no plan to reopen the swimming area. Did you say loss of life? Yes, haven't you read these reports? You know, the water is like this deep. I know, but have you read the reports from the state? That, I'm wondering if there's been a disconnect um, between the state understanding of what's here and what we actually have here and these inspections and mandates that they're throwing our way because it doesn't, it doesn't add up. The report talks about a dam and if the dam lets go, loss of life because of the swimming area below the dam. We don't have a swimming area below the dam. We don't really even have a dam. It's a board. It's a thing. And we could, could we just not we just take it out and not have the dam there and move it somewhere else and then not have to deal with all these inspections and this and I don't want to complicate this whole report because it's a fantastic report but I am frustrated when I read these state reports talking about things that don't exist in our town and then I hear from you that we're under inspections and things on what a monthly basis in case this Dam fails. I mean, this is. It's the talk, dam fails. Yeah. When the levee breaks, have no place to well, stay. Well, but you talk about you know frustration with with cost being placed on the town. This is a real and re an unreasonable cost. It's real and it's unreasonable, and we should do something about it. We shouldn't look into. I agree with you. Well, we should look into whether or not we should. I think you and I can go out and take that. That we should just we anymore. should just plug the, the whole up, you know. there'll be no dam. I talked about the, you know, the. What did I say before? I mean, it's just it. it know. I don't know how we should. Silly putty, thank you. Uh, you know, just get out there and just backfill it. I mean, somebody got a backhoe in town and just I've, plug it up. Giant toothpaste thing. Step on one side, plug it up, be Dan, done with it. Well, have you looked at this thing? There's. I saw the pictures of it. It seems comical, but you know, what do I know? I just push paper for a living and the engineers will come up with all these gyrations on I, the sky's going like to fall and there's going to be a flood and it's the whole dam and we're all going to drown. No, I'm, I'm being serious. I would like, all joking aside, I would like to have the individual or entity from the state who feels that we have to have these inspections and pay for them come down and meet us on site and explain to us we, where this loss of life and swimming area information is coming from. I because think that's just one aspect of it though because you're talking about sinkholes in a major roadway and if those sinkholes persist then the road goes away and if the road goes away people can't travel from one side of the town yes, to but, the other side of town. But it, to say that they're connected, they're in separate, the dam is here, the sinkhole's there. It's uphill from the sinkhole. The sinkhole's right in the middle of the road. Oh, right in the middle of the of the, the We dam. found voids in the road and we found voids in the sidewalk. Right. And those are the two patches the that you see in the roadway. Is, is what, 15, 20 feet below that. So the water that's getting to the sinkhole is coming from somewhere else, I would think. But that's what the seepage analysis is and that's what the studies that we're doing are trying to figure out exactly what is causing the voids and how we can go about making sure that the structure remains intact. It should not be called a dam. I agree with you. But can we get the report corrected to show that we don't have a swimming but, area right, and there is right, right. no catastrophic loss of life? If, if they if call it a lost. dam, are we under yes. a mandate from Beacon Hill to follow dam requirements, that's what I'm you know, and, and compliance and we're jumping through hoops on it, it's it you know. Is it is it a cat or a dog? Is it a dam, or is it just like a pile of dirt with a drain with a well, drainage it, pipe from one side of the to the other? It looks just to me like some sort of like pipe. It is a pipe. And then yeah, because the pipe's crumbling, right? You know, again, I'm trying to use reason and common sense, right? Uh, you know, well, so it caves in because there's a cavity. So why don't they fill the cavity so it stops like caving in? I mean, help me. And it's the wizard. What, and that's what's being proposed, but they have to understand exactly what the volume of flow for the rainfall events are coming through that culvert so that they can make sure that it's sized properly so that they can make sure that this doesn't continue to happen. So there's a, it's a, it's a two-part process. So it's not something that they can just fill in the hole and then it won't 
but but you can look at it with a naked eye and the water levels like that so it's just they need engineers to say yeah there's two inches of water I, I, it's mind-boggling that we have to jump through all these hoops. I mean, it's it just, does it ever, like, fill up? Well, no. You have to, you have to design to the 100-year storm, so there are requirements in place. 100-year storm. Yes, that you <laughs> have coming. to. Well, well, just think about the rainfall events that we recently had this past year. I mean, the amount of rainfall that fell was, was, was pretty significant, and that impacts the way that the drainage of our entire watershed. So, I mean, yes. little events like that can have a big impact, and if you don't have the correct infrastructure in place, it could lead to, to catastrophic failure, flooding of driveways, homes, and things like we saw the other, the other day. But, but if I could just say, we used to have one of these, if you call them a dam, we used to have one of these at the old mill pond, and then somebody took it away. They just, like, took it away. So that, to my understanding, was never designated as a dam that had any, any ability to cause a a loss of life flooding. Somebody took the metal piece away, and we don't do it anymore. We don't put it up and down. So, my what you said. I agree with you. Kat. I know. I I'm thinking. Uh, like, this you is know, an un, this is an unusual event, but I'm thinking that we're in agreement it's that, like a, you know, that perhaps this should be described as something other than a dam, because the water. No, well, the water, what's happening with the water flow throughout the rocks and the road is not due to this piece of metal holding back a foot of water. No. Probably. Shouldn't be any dams, you know. It, it stops the fish from swimming upstream and everything. It's environmentally destructive to build dams, let nature do its own thing, and if the house is in the way, move the house out of the way. In the driveway with it. Okay. Well, anyway, I got off topic, and I We're apologize. Off topic. I apologize. I, what are I we like, doing with a capital plan? I like it. I just want that. You like it? That damn thing changed to another word. That's all. Another description. Edward, I'm all set. You sure? Uh, no. Okay. But I think I know why. Yes. Mark. He's too busy laughing. He has would, to take a minute. Would you like to put the, the dam project on next week's agenda? No, no. All not until right. we figure out what we need to do about it. Otherwise, Mark will just All right. Call it a ham sandwich. <laughs> All right. Next up, approve and ratify the contract for Town Administrator Rebecca Oldham for, ju for July 1st, 2024 to June 30th, 2027. Who wants to do that? You want to give us the uh, fine well, snippets on that, Kathy? I, I thought you need to vote to accept the um, executive minutes, which I did provide um, hard copies. Before we ratify? I thought so. Am I wrong or right? Which goes first? It doesn't matter since the sensitivity is no longer, the uh, omission no longer applies since it's already been voted on. So these are Once kind of- Once we vote on it, that's kind of waves everybody's interest in it, it becomes a public document at that point in time? Essentially. Essentially? Right. Because there's no more negotiations, you close negotiations, so there's no longer a discussion on, on those terms. It's just to ratify the vote in open session. What if we vote not to ratify it, then I guess it's still, you know, kind of unfinished business. Then yes, we should not move forward with accepting minutes. So you want us to ratify the vote first? I think we ratify the vote first and then we, uh, we disclose to the public what we did in secret session <laughs> procedurally you agree with that I, it sounds okay yeah sure sounds um, all right move the question <laughs> motion to ratify um the town administrator contract as agreed to at our executive session meeting on november 20th um for the period of june july 1st 2025 to june 30th 2027, would that be correct? 24. 24. What? The contract period that we're ratifying would be 2024. My contract From 2024. Doesn't it start July? She has an existing oh, contract okay, through okay, the okay. end of the so fiscal I, year. So I have the wrong. So it would be July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2027. Correct. Okay. So we probably need to correct the. Three years. Yeah, three years, exactly. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second that, any discussion? I'll discuss it. We, uh, if I may, Rebecca. <laughs> we sat down with Rebecca 
<coughs> and we uh, worked on a new agreement. And um, we're happy to have her, and we want to keep her. Okay. Um, there are uh, salary increases. We think they're warranted. Um, we discussed um, compensation, um, and um, we need to be competitive. There's been a lot of pressure, uh, not only in uh, government, to uh, increase wages, wages to uh, retain um, key employees and people doing a good job. Um, inflationary factors uh, at play, and um, just um, competition and uh, availability of qualified people in the workplace post-COVID. So I'm um, happy that uh, Rebecca uh, and the Board of Slackman had a meeting of minds, and I hope uh, she has a, a good uh, next three years. So any other discussion? I make a motion that we ratify our contract. <coughs> Second that. I did that already. Oh, you did that already. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I need more coffee. <laughs> all those in favor? Okay. All right. Four out. You know what? On all our votes, I didn't say in one absence. <laughs> Nobody picked me up on that, right? But they write that down at the top of the minutes. Yeah. So we got to go back and revote everything? No. All right. Okay. They Jason's the absent. Four zero and one absence. Um, next up, appointment of the board. Well, are we doing the minutes then or not? I'm going in order. Appointments of the board. It's blank. Approval of the minutes, number nine. Board of Selectmen meeting minutes, September 25th, 2023. So everyone had the opportunity to read those. Yeah, they, lo they look to be in order. So I'll move for passage. You move the question? You move that? I'll move for passage. All right. Second that. Second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yep. Four in favor, one absent. Um, Board of Selectmen meeting minutes, October 23rd, 2023. Is there a motion? Yeah, a motion to approve. Second. Was I here? No. All right. You weren't here. That's why I don't remember it. Um, <laughs> so the other side of the earth. All those in favor? Yep. Um, three in favor, one absent, and one abstention. Passes. Uh, Board of Selectmen Executive Session minutes November the 6th, 2023. No. We just did that. November 20th. The one you're at, we have to do. No, we didn't vote on the minutes. We, we, we ratified four first. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so you, yeah, you weren't at that other meeting either. <laughs> I wasn't at that meeting either. Is there a motion? Yes, Mo motion to approve the minutes. Thank the you. Seconded? Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Those in favor? Yep. Three in favor, one absent, one abstention. Um, number 12, Board of Selectmen Executive Session minutes November the 20th 2023 I'll make a motion to accept those I was there I was present second seconded any discussion all those in favor yep four in favor one absent uh, next up town administrators time Rebecca Oldham Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have much to update other than to let the board know that we sent out the budget request. Uh, they are due on the 15th, and then the narrative and mission statement and goals will be due the 31st, so stay tuned. And then also, just to alert the board for the warrants, we have a payroll warrant for $217,631 and a bill warrant of $787,506. And that's all I have. Any questions for Rebecca? Issues? No? Well, good. All right. Thank you. Um, selectman's time. Kathy. Um, 
No, I'm going to wait because I have to talk about the... You want to go last or you want to pass? I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. Yeah. Mark. Um, no, I just... Uh, my only concern is if uh, Rebecca could get an update on the Elm Park trees from Rennie and other than that, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, yeah, just a couple things. Uh, I, I got a few calls about the lights down in Elm Park, and uh, everybody said how nice they looked, what a nice job it was done. Uh, I think it was the, the uh, electric company uh, put them up, and they, uh, they, they, do, look, they do look terrific. Uh, one question was, who's paying for the electricity for it? Uh, the uh, Global Municipal Light has been taking care of all of that. Okay. Uh, the other thing, um, don't forget on uh, Thursday, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. And um, that's, all, that's all I have. Point Ed, Pearl Harbor Day is this, uh, this week. Remember. I don't have anything. I uh, sit down with Rebecca and make the agenda, so I have the privilege and the honor and the uh, <laughs> option to add something on agenda if I want to. So uh, uh, next up, we have older unfinished business. Uh, Pentucket Regional Agreement update from Kathy Castro. Yes. Um, so t I believe tomorrow night I'm going to go to this, uh, I'll call it an informal group meeting, because until we pass the... Um, revised regional agreement, there's not a formal committee created, right? So uh, West Newberry has already submitted the changes that they want in the agreement. This group is going to be looking to see if the Groveland Board of Selectmen is supportive of the changes that West Newberry has proposed. And I believe that Rebecca has reviewed those with us. Um, as far as the capital costs going up to $20,000 and above, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. The West Newbury changes, one of those is to raise the threshold for um, capital that the town would be responsible for the elementary school to up to 20000 and above. That's correct. Right. So that... From what? From, from 10. 10. From 10000 like it is now in, in the regional agreement, it's $10,000. Right. Is it per project? Is there an aggregate or it's, uh, how does that work? I mean, could it be 10 times 20 or 1 times 20? How does it work? Is there a cap on it? So anything over $20,000 would be the responsibility of the town and anything under $20,000 would be the responsibility of the district. But we want the district to pay as much as possible. <laughs> so, so that's good. We want it to coincide with our capital policy, which is just increased to $20,000. Yeah, and it allows us to do, like we just discussed, our capital plan and then allocate funding as it com becomes available to those projects. So it gives you more control? Not me more control, but the town. Not specifically. You as our agent of service to the public. We are able to advocate for the town a little bit better with those thresholds that match our own. That's what I meant. I never personalize anything. Thank you. Okay. Sounds um, good, Kathy? Yes, and so then the other change, which I don't really see that it matters to us, is something about the location of the schools. Um, do you have that language? Could you put it? It's just a small word change. It's something. Well, you've seen it in your previous packet. They want to have the words changed Say about. That again. The wording changed You're about. On the mic. No, oh, sorry. No they, they want the wording changed as to the elementary schools in each town and it's just a very small change i'm not quite sure what significance it has if any so i believe the intent as we had discussed previously was essentially to allow for uh, regionalization of an elementary school if in fact the town wanted to move in that direction um, I believe it was a change of, of shall to may. Shall to may. The word shall, shall. Is, is changed to may. What do they want to do with regionalizing? 
I don't like regionalizing <laughs> anything. You lose local control, but that's my two cents on it. So what do they want to do with the, uh, the elementary school? Let me see if I have it. So is it, is it, is it you looking for me to share the document you gave me? Um, well, no, the one that West Newbury wrote. Let me just see. I may have it in front of me. It says now there shall be not less than one elementary school in each member town. They want to change that sentence to say there may be not less than one elementary school in each town. There may, uh, I mean, are these grammatically, uh, you know, correct? So I'm going to the meeting. I want to just make sure if there's any objection to that sentence changing word. I'm just going to see. Any action voted by the regional district school committee which directly and specifically affects the elementary schools in only one town. That's staying the same. Shall require that two of the three yeah, members of the regional district school committee from that town. I'm just looking for I mean, I hate to be nitpicky, but it's a, it's a, it's a gigunda run on sentence here. Um, <laughs> The word, the thing, the sentence they're changing is that they want to change the first sentence um, Section four. to the word may. I'm looking for, I don't have a handy copy of. Um, so w let, let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Which school, which town has more than one elementary school? Let's just talk about it. Merrimack. So this affects Merrimack. <laughs> I don't, be I believe the, the conversation that we had was again more so in the, the, the terms of being able to eliminate a school in a, a, a district and regionalize if they wanted to. So instead of being mandated to have at least one, you could in fact have no elementary school and regionalize with another member community. So right now there shall be not less. So you have to have at least one elementary school. I agree with that. So I believe what they're trying to say is that you may have less than one. And that would mean that you would be allowed to regionalize. There's still other processes that you'd need to go through in order to make that happen, but I believe the intent was to allow for future regionalization efforts to commence without having to amend the regional agreement to reflect such. Whereas now, as it's stated, you have to have at least one. You cannot have less than one. Okay. So may giving you the opportunity, not mandating you have to or not have to, but telling you that you may. You still have to go through the certain procedure in order to get that accomplished, but you may have less than one if you so choose. And that gives the authority to the school committee. That's not my understanding. Who has the power? Is it the voters or the, or the, or the elected towns. officials? The three towns would have to vote. How? We to, to, to move because the elementary schools in each town house the elementary population to move that to permanently would require a three town vote. By who? The, the elected officials or the, the ballot vote? I think ballot. Because yeah. I don't want to give the school committee the authority no, to close the bag bill. I, Too I, much power. I don't believe that was the intent. And I, uh, I, I don't believe that's the intent. <laughs> no, but I, I, I express the same exact concern. Do we know or you think you know? <laughs> well, we, I expressed the same exact concern when we originally talked about this, and I said that I think that there needs to be more details given as to what that would mean. Yeah, but at the same time, the intent was never to say that you had to. It was yeah, just I don't to give like arguing intent. It's called, you know, you end up in a courtroom somewhere. You know, what did you mean? I have no idea. I meant to something different. That's amb ambiguities, right? So? so do we agree with this or not at this juncture? Are we? I can only speak for myself. I don't agree with that change without Okay. Really, how the mechanism would would come into play? I mean, that's a huge issue. I mean, we're not talking about ten grand, twenty grand. We're talking about potentially having less than one elementary school in Groveland called closing the bag now. I mean, let's just call it what it is. I mean, if you say we're going to have less than one elementary school, <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> 
But not only that, is that if they were able to regionalize, if they were able to get one elementary school for both West Newbury and Merrimack, the savings on their end would be substantial where there would be no additional financial incentive for the, for the town of Groveland. I understand that, but who's the decision-making authority on that? That seems to be the overriding question. I want to know. Is it the school committee to vote? I don't want to give them the power. Okay. That's my, my, that's my opinion on that. I don't want the school committee to have the authority to close the Bagdell Elementary so School down. the decision-making authority? Yep. Okay. Elected officials should have administrative authority to manage, not to make mind-boggling epic decisions in my opinion limited government power to the people bottom up not top down okay so that is just one of the changes that we talked about the um the capital is fine right i'm okay with the capital it's okay. you know it's you get to index it for inflation so if something you know it goes up they did a lot of few, quite a few changes on the um budget side they sort of put back in the whole regional advisory committee again and then took out the meetings that the towns might call if you read those changes so the advisory committee would be a standing committee and we it, can it, it's advisory right and would convene to look at the budget or something I don't but know. it's advisory it has no authority to uh okay make binding decisions correct correct okay so you don't mind that change and they changed a date um well i think you recommended but rebecca they're changing a date for the capital was it the capital plan is going to come out earlier capital plan for the school what they want fixed at the school that we might have to pay for they asked that to be released in october instead of january are we good with that yeah the early information is better so when you know it's you know we're not scrambling you know the time is an advantage agree um and then it just goes on about the advisory committee uh, and it took out the request of finance committee and the board of selectmen but of course we can request a meeting anytime we want and i don't think that has to be in the agreement i mean did you have any the, feelings the, about that being taken the, out does it does does it take away do we lose a right to sit down at the table can we go back and look at that right sentence taking out that whoop you went too far you know, I think any any member of town should be able to say, you know what, and, and, and not to abuse any process and upon you know, request, do it every week, but uh, upon proper notice, you should say, you know what, I want to sit down and talk about this. And, and, and I don't think it should be um, unreasonably denied. I don't think it would be. I think most people are willing to talk. Well, do we have a problem with that being removed? And it's under the budget process. Why did they have a problem with that upon request of the Finance Committee or the Board of Selectmen of any member town? I mean, well, what is the problem with that? What are, what, are, what are they concerned about? Are they afraid that we might want to talk about something? I'm not too sure. I think that there was language that was taken out of the agreement back in 2016 that alluded to the Advisory Committee, and I think that this was just an attempt to make that whole again in terms of what was already approved for an Advisory Committee. So instead of making the language remove it entirely they went back the other direction and put it back in i think you can have both you know i mean i don't think the board of selectmen or our finance committee has uh you know been overly burdensome or unreasonable in requesting meetings uh, it's probably opposite probably don't do it enough so do you want to leave it in so i think we leave it in it's no harm no foul i mean they can still have the advisory committee but if the board of selectmen really had a, a, an issue and we wanted to sit down and talk i think upon request we should be able to do it okay and below that um i think rebecca everyone you, should have a voice yeah we they changed the um that they don't have to specify every cost 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 uh, every cost or expense that costs one thousand dollars or more because that 
would create a long pages so, and pages so, of nonsense. Yeah, but why don't you keep it in there and just bring it up? I mean, bring it up to five thousand dollars or three thousand oh. dollars. I mean, I don't want my new year to have a financial statement with a you know a thousand pages on it with you know. Well, it, it, you know, it's I, in there for a reason so that you know I don't want to be ludicrous, but for illustrative purposes, you can have one number expenses twenty million dollars. Well, I need a little more detail than that. Well, yes, but right. But so, it mentions also that they have to list the staffing and they have to break out the capital. I mean, that's all covered: administration, transportation, maintenance, debt. I think I think ten thousand dollars, but there ought to be some threshold on it. It was in there for a reason a long time well, ago. Well, yeah, because they were worried that they were bundling everything into one line. Well, exactly. I mean, you can hide the ball and just like, you know, expenses. Okay. Okay. Thanks but for the info. So we don't have a number, but we want some number. We want a threshold. What's a reasonable number? Is, 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 is $1,000 minutia and 5000 would be reasonable or 10000 would be reasonable? But certainly, if uh, I'm going to take it to a ludicrous extreme just for the okay. sake of illustration so here. It shouldn't be a million dollars and you don't have to tell me what's in the million bucks. Well, it says down here that enrollment staffing total expenditures, et cetera, would be included and included for five years. But I wanted to insert in there um, stop here for a second. How dated is that thousand dollar figure? 1972 probably, or? Yeah, well, back in the 1990s. Yeah, about when the agreement was made, when we regionalized the elementaries in. It's dated. All right, five to ten thousand. You want a number? There has to be a number in there. Otherwise, you could get you know like five <coughs> numbers on a financial statement. You like you know it's useless information. You need but some level of detail. number greater than $1,000 in. You okay. Know. So below that, though, what I was hoping to put in, based on just feedback from um, citizens and myself looking at the budget, that we used to be able to see a breakdown by the school. This would have to be included um, down in this bottom area that the budget shall include a breakdown by school building which shows staffing, maintenance, operations, and other costs for each school building in the district. Um, and that regional school district programs housed in such buildings would be identified in costs shown. So that we would know what's in each building. Cost and what it costs. We don't know, based on the budget we see now, what is the cost of the Bagnell School building. We don't know. We don't know. We it's, don't know, we should know. We don't know. It's not broken out like that anymore. So to go back to that, though, you'd want to be careful. 2023, we don't know. But I think you'd want to be careful that there might be district-based programs in the school, so you don't want to assume that everything in there is just for Groveland. So we'd want to know if there's a district program, and that's why I added a the good language. good line item, district programs, yeah. and then uh, exclusively Groveland programs. If, there's, uh, right. if everything's commingled, then I guess it's... Okay, so... Would you be in favor of seeing that kind of detail in the budget? I think they should provide it. Okay. Again, not in minute detail, but just give us, you know. The staffing, the operate, the maintenance operations, yes. You know, I think the people in, in Groveland should know whether or not, you know, 50% of the Bagnell budget is, is regional, or is it 10% or is it 5%? Okay. I think that's uh, information um, people should know is, um, you know, is the bag now being used for Groveland?ers or is it being used for people outside? Well, the district programs are in all the elementaries, so you, you know. But it'd be nice to know where they are. Yeah. And what they cost. Yeah. Okay, so that's. Yeah, I know. thought I, we could ask to have that included, then added to that right. section. I mean, if you have words or anything different. I yeah, mean, well, I just want to say that, you know, there's a benefit and a burden to uh, um, financial accounting and, and putting these together. So, you, you know, I don't believe that we should spend $100, you know, um, accounting for $10. So there's a cost benefit. So if it doesn't cost, you know, an exorbitant amount for them to do the accounting work on this okay. and to disclose this information, um, you don't spend a hundred dollars to save ten dollars, okay? okay? So I, I don't want minutia and I don't want to micromanage, but um, we should know generally um, what the uh, 
allocation is on the uh, uh, resources being spent at the bag mill. Okay. And so then we would be asking to have the individual buildings, the cost basis for the buildings. <coughs> what do they cost in this budget? How else do you make decisions on okay. whether or not you okay. tear it down or you repair it? I right. Mean, and that's right. A, that's a lot of what's happened okay. in the last decade is, um, and why isn't it being maintained? So, so if you don't know what the maintenance budget is, mm -hmm. then you have a building that's deteriorated and you end up spending $246 million to knock it down and build a new right. one. So I gave, Rebecca, I think passed to you guys, this is the overview of the changes that I thought we might want to propose because right now West Newbury has been the only proposal, so that would be one, our first proposal. Yeah. Okay. The second one is that I've talked a lot about the fact that the stabilization fund is inside the operating budget in the school budget, so it's not visible to the town meeting vote, whereas our stabilization fund is a separate article. I mean, we're fully transparent. You should on disclose it. it. Okay, so. Yes, they should. I don't I, know why they haven't. Well, I changed the words in the sections where it says that they're breaking it down into um, operating and debt or capital into operating stabilization and capital so that they show the transfer of money to the stabilization account as part of the budget. Yeah, but they could have a stabilization fund as a general heading and then they could uh, delineate the uh, sub subcategories of what's in stabilization all within sec one sec section of the financial statement instead of spreading it out all over the financial statement. Well, right so. the, the way the regional agreement reads, we uh, vote on an operating budget and we vote on the capital. That's how it's on our town meeting warrant. Yeah. Do you want it still just like that? With the stabilization is a detail inside the operating budget. Stabilization seems to me like it's it's uh, it's capital of some sort. It's equity. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Rebecca? It's 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 like a balance fund. It's what's left over. Maybe what's available. It's a reserve. Um, so to me, it's it's equity. And the offset is with cash and could be other instruments. Um, but to me, it ought to be somewhere down the bottom in the. Um, equity section so you want it in the budget so not visible to town meeting. I don't have too much expertise in government accounting but it's still the same accounting theory you have assets you have liabilities and you have equity ale a equals L plus e well, right now accounting students out there what you see when you see the budget is you will see the excess and deficiency in the revenue but you'll have to look through a lot of pages to find that line where that moves that E and D into stabilization. Stabilization funds are, um, it's either, you know, it's, uh, it's either, uh, you know, asset or it's an equity, but it's, why is it in operating expenditures unless it's appropriated? How does that work? Well, the school committee votes that as part of their budget, they're transferring all of the E and D into stabilization. That's the policy they voted in 2006. Which stabilization is effectively a savings account, yes. right? So it ought to be in, it, it, it ought to be grouped. How do, they, how do they present it now? They present the budget to us and in the top of the revenue listing, you'll see the END, excess and deficiency, which is their equivalent of free cash. You'll see that. Right. But then you would have to go through line items to find the page where that amount is moved to stabilization. It's not like. You have to search and destroy for it. So no, it ought to, they ought to show us what they have in stabilization. It ought to be a separate. Um, so just in the budget? I think so. Okay, so in the budget. So. It, 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 yeah. It's really simple. If the financial statements are any document aren't user friendly. Right. Why not? Make it user friendly. You shouldn't okay. have to like look in, in, on, in five pages and add up five numbers to come up with the answer you're looking for. How much okay. money do they have in stabilization? It's not a trick question. It just gets to transparency, yeah, making it easy. It should so, not be a trick question. And then the same thing, since we show the E&D and we show the chapter 70 in the revenue, I was going to ask for them to show the circuit breaker reimbursement. Um, I understand that it's a prior year reimbursement, but I believe it's revenue that they receive and it should be shown up with the revenue. 
Instead, it's again, it's buried in the budget as an offset to their outplacement special ed costs. There's like a little footnote. I don't know that it should be buried anywhere. You know, if you're getting funds from a prior period, it, it should be somehow disclosed that these aren't current revenues, that they're, um, you know, might have been. There's a one year lag. Might have been deferred revenue from a prior period. No, it's just the way it's, it's the way it happens. They file for the um, costs that qualify for circuit breaker, which is special education, and they don't get those funds for the current year until the following year. So there's always a lag. How do they present it? Right now, um, there's nothing in the revenue, but when you look down through the detail of the budget, if you get into the line items, under outplacement for special education, you'll see a footnote of offset from secret breaker funds. So you have to read the footnotes. It's not on the face of the financial no. statement presentation. It's not. So. And it's a significant amount of money. Well, if it's material, it's, it's like mater a million. Materiality yep. should be disclosed. If it's immaterial, then you don't disclose, generally speaking. So, if it's a material item, a million dollars, uh, um, it should be labeled in such a way as, you know, circuit breaker money owed from state. You know, yep. just call it what it is. You know, okay. Come up with and some verbiage on it. And but also, that would also give us a, f a running history on it, so that we can see when they don't receive the reimbursement that they were expecting. Because that has happened. And that should be on a comparative financial yeah, statement. Mm -hmm. So we Correct. expected X and we got Y. Yes. Call up your state rep, your state senator, and say, well, right. we, you told us by the formula we were going to get a million dollars and we got <clears throat> less. Okay. And the final thing that I would like to bring forward to them um, regard, is regarding the way enrollment is counted for the district. Um, I think you're well aware that I tried to add it up, yeah. and it didn't add up. Didn't foot the spreadsheet. Right, was, uh, and there was, there was a math error in the adding up of the enrollments that's being corrected, so our assessment's going to be redone. But that put that aside, what, what was, I think, difficult was that over the years um, with the introduction of kindergarten and preschool, within the district, probably well-intentioned, they kept trying to account for charter school tuition based, this and that, and they started making new categories. So when you look at the enrollment sheets from like 2012, which I did, and then today, they're very different looking. But the state takes the enrollment data from Pentucket. Every year, Pentucket has to file. What do you say? They're not apples to apples. They change definitions, and so that you, you but, yeah, so what I, analysis. But what is, is, is consistent accurate. is the state has a definition of foundation enrollment as those students for which the district is financially responsible. They, this Pentucket files with the state every October, all their enrollment numbers, and the state calculates the foundation enrollment for each town and for the district. That data is used to set the target budget, the foundation budget. That data is used to set the minimum required contribution that each town must provide. And in addition, because of providing those two benchmarks, in a large part, it, it explains the Chapter 70 money that comes in to fill the gap. But we don't, the numbers we're using for enrollment do not tie to the foundation enrollment numbers. And I would like to propose that we standardize the regional agreement to the foundation enrollment numbers, that we tie to a clearly defined way of counting these students and weighting, because they do, the state has the, the program already that weights the special education um, students in kindergarten as full students, whereas the half-day students the, that we only really had to provide half-day are half a student. <clears throat> and that's the standardized enrollment count. The enrollment data that I've been looking through and trying to tie out to, I can't tie it out. I just can't. We need standardized definitions. Correct. Otherwise, Correct. You, you know, what do you mean by right. that? Again, it goes back to what do you mean right. it, and yeah. what's the intent? And so you create your own formula and your own definition of everything and you can shuffle the deck. And, so. then, and then mistakes happen. No, no fault. I mean, there's more a, than mistakes happen. Yeah, I mean, mistakes are going to cleverness. Right. Well, m they're going to continue to happen because it's really difficult to manage all this as they change definitions of charter school, as they change definitions of um, kindergarten. I mean, this, the state's making the decisions and changing the definitions. Why not let them provide us 
the enrollment. If we don't agree with it, we can ask them for the breakout of the data. As, as far as I know, we get funding based in part on foundation enrollment. Yes. Yes. So it's a mm -hmm. it's a formula that shouldn't be the secret Coca Cola formula, and we're all left to guess at, at, at right. why we get what we get based upon how many pupils they define as you know on a formula, and we, and we don't we're not privy to the formula. So we need standardization. It should be disclosed. And the, and the uh, Beacon Hill ought to provide us with that. Well, they can. I mean, the point is, though, do we want the I changed wording in the regional agreement to tie, say that enrollment will be tied to the foundation enrollment determined by the state. Because it's a four-page definition of how they get to it. Unless someone else comes up with a better. Um, and can provide me with. Or a rebuttal to that. I, I don't yeah. know why they wouldn't disagree with that. Right. I, I don't know either, but I thought if it's if we're in consensus on it, I'll bring it forward to the group and hear what everybody else has to say about it. We're not going to vote on this tonight, but we just we're not voting. We're just consensus. Do we want it? I mean, no, no other town is bringing this forward. We are. Yeah. Okay. Your idea. Does it benefit us? I like us your idea, a bit? Kathy. This, yeah, it benefits us at this point in time. It benefits us a little bit. But more importantly, it standardizes this enrollment. Of course. Account. Otherwise, you're on. You know, you, you, you you're know. in a state of flux. You're on quicksand. You don't even know where you stand on anything. You know. Right. It's and we we account for almost 40 percent of the enrollments. So, for us, these small fluctuations are large dollars. Man, it's shifting sand. It's a lot of money involved here. Shifting money. Yes. Yes. So. If that's all right, those are the <coughs> changes that I would go forward with. So what do you want to do, make a motion to adopt those changes? How are we going to proceed Well, no, just a consensus. Is there just a general consensus that this, what we've discussed. So you're going to discuss this and we've appointed you yeah, as our uh, agent of the Board of Selectmen to uh, right. uh, and go ebb and flow with these issues and see well, what they say. Yeah, we're going to have one meeting. Um, West Newbury feels they have broad consensus. For their changes right now, you're saying maybe not the one about the elementary schools. Eh, I'm not. I'm not big on that. Kathy and I have been doing a lot of talking this evening. Mark <laughs> and Ed. Yeah, good. I don't, I, I don't want you to feel left out. Uh, no, that's fine. It, uh, look, just a question. Uh, based upon um, section 14A, it uh, amendments to the agreement uh, receive a majority vote of uh, approval for each member of town at a town meeting. So. Any of these changes have to go, have to be submitted to the town town meeting? Yes, that's my understanding. So we don't need to really vote approval of it. That's your understanding, no, or but, it's a maybe. But the three towns want to bring forward. We can't all bring our own changes forward. <laughs> You'll have three different regional agreements. I understand that. Okay. That's why you have a committee to hash right, it out. Right, it's like okay. no one needs to know how the sausage is made. You just you know. Right. So we have to reach consensus on these changes. So you want a little pushback on the change of the word shall and bring it up, yeah. You know. See what the what the deal is on that. Okay. And then we'll bring forward what we would like. And if you come up with anything else when you read through it, by all means, this is the time. We hopefully won't have to change this agreement again for another five years or so if we Thanks do. Thanks for doing right. the work and picking up on the formula, because there should be a definition. Mm -hmm. On every term. Yep. What do you mean by that? Well, it, the, hopefully, you know, with some work with the advisory committee, we can get a budget that's easy to read, easy to follow, and from consistent year to year so we know what's changing. So we don't have to go on a, such a big hunting mission to find out why our assessment went up. What are some of the changes that the other two towns have proposed? Well, only West Newbury seems to have come forward with changes so far. I've not heard from Merrimack. Is Merrimack just in agreement with West Newbury? Understanding Merrimack has not put forward any changes, but has only made commentary about the item concerning the location of the schools, and that was the letter that was included in one of your packets. But oh, they haven't yeah, proposed any other that. changes. So it was West Newbury who led the charge, and then based upon the presentation that that Select Woman Cash and Ellis had provided, and some of my own feedback, we had provided an additional memo that was included as for discussion, but not Merrimack. To be continued. When's your next meeting? We're meeting tomorrow night. All right. Then yep. I'll so we'll go forward and see what everybody thinks. We'll, we'll, I'll put it back on the. Put it back put, on the agenda. We'll back on, and I will stick it on the old. 
Yeah, I'm going to try and get, if he can get us Business. that form that he edits on, that would make it a lot easier than me scribbling all over these pages. <laughs> you know, <coughs> like a, something that's, that we can edit. Oh, you want me to ch convert the PDF into a Word no, document? No, no, I thought Angus must already done it because he changed, he typed his changes in, the agreement. I'm not sure. I can, I can ask and take a look. Well, he did. He provided a copy of the agreement at the big Tritown meeting where his changes were already written in. I think he just selected certain sections, but we can get you an entire agreement that's in a Word document and editable. Right, but my concern is if all, if all three towns are editing a document differently, we're going to end up with three documents. We could also, yeah. at the next meeting tomorrow, discuss using a Google Doc or a, a shared That's document. what I'm thinking we should start to do is go to the shared doc so that we're not rewriting the same document over and over and over again. And then we could bring the shared doc back to this meeting. You should have, like, you know, red lines and red. redactions and stuff in the... <laughs> You know, like a, a big, you know, That's polished a, law firm. Not like mine. Something that's easy to follow. <laughs> that's all. Something that's easy. I like chicken scratch. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Job well done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good. That's it. Can we move on? Move on. Okay. Uh, other items not reasonably anticipated at the time of posting. Mark, did you think of anything? No. Edward? No. Kathy? No. I think we uh, <laughs> I think we ran the gamut. Correspondence, uh, this is just FYI, if somebody wants to look, we have a draft of Board of Selectmen meeting minutes October the 10th, 2023. We have Board of Selectmen meeting minutes November the 6th, 2023. Number 15, we have Stephanie, <coughs> is it Bar Bartelt? Bartlett. Okay, is that a typo? Bartlett, right. Okay, Bartell, a Conservation Commission member awarded Certificate Achievement for MACC. Uh, what is uh, MACC as an acronym? Congratulations. Is it, is it suitable for hanging? <laughs> there you go. All right, congratulations. Uh, we have... Um, correspondence from West Newbury Board of Selectmen concerning Whittier School Building Project. So anybody who wants to read that, it's available. So um, that's it. Um, next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be on Monday, December 18th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Unless someone has something else that I missed, I make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. You want to make the motion? Sure. All right. I'll second it. How easy I am. Can we discuss adjournment? Somebody told me we couldn't. I don't know the answer to that. Can yes, we? you can. You can discuss adjournment? You just can't discuss tabling. Oh, is there any discussion on adjournment? No. All right, all those in favor? Thanks for coming, everybody. Everybody have a good evening.